Francesca DiMatola, you're an Emmy nominee for Outstanding Production Design for a period or fantasy program for your work on The Great. Uh, the show is set in 18th century Russia, uh, and while it's not strictly faithful to history, uh, was this a time period or locale that you've designed for in the past? No, but it's also not a time, well, it is a time frame, but not a specific locale. I'd say we, we're not really faithful to um, the period, as I'm sure you know from the title of the show. So it's a, it's like a mishmash of different, the palace we created from scratch, that we built from scratch, is inspired by so many different palaces all around the world, I have to say. So yeah, it is, it takes place in Russia, but um, yeah. Um, and, you know, having that much freedom and having that many things that you can draw inspiration from, does that make it easier, like open things up? Or, you know, is it so many options that uh, it becomes more difficult? No, I think it definitely makes it more fun because uh, I think that the design is in the, very much in the scripts and in the characters. So you sort of, I think that's the starting point for every single set that we've done on this and every scene that we've done within sets that existed. For example, in season two, we used, we rebuilt within a lot of existing sets and we re rebuilt completely new sets um, inspired by the scenes. And therefore, yeah, just being, being able to source from being really wide with our research, I think it's a great source of inspiration. And it's not a challenge, no, not at all. I mean, I think there's always something in the script that will um, spark the initial research. And then from there, it can go really broad and we need to sort of narrow down. But yeah, sometimes I do, maybe I do get lost a bit and I need to sort of narrow down and, and yeah, solidify. But uh, how many, uh, you know, the, the, this season, of course, there was a coup uh, and then sort of the, the repair after that. Uh, like how many new sets uh, were you building or, or sets that you completely redesigned uh, over the course of the season? I think we, uh, I mean, so many because we, as I mentioned, we sort of built within the sets that we had a lot. So um, and they were so, like, I'd say in, in some cases, sets got to be completely redesigned so we had for example a coronation scene well yes as you said like the, during the coup the palace was partly destroyed and that to me I considered like new sets because we literally had to rebuild part of the palace to be able to tackle the destruction and then uh, throughout the episodes we see the reconstruction of the palace and um, it's quite gradual and uh, and we've got rooms which we created chapels and uh, well kind of a chapel cathedral within what used to be Catherine's well Peter the Great but Peter the not great Peter the Third's um, state room office we created a chapel within that so that was a quite a big build um, like a two months build within an existing set so a completely repurpose of that set and I'd say for sure two thirds or more of the sets were rebuilt and reconfigured and turned back to being what they were. So it was quite a fun challenge in terms of turning rooms around. And how fun was it to turn uh, the palace into a war zone uh, when, when you're starting the season? It was actually, it was great to start in that way because it was sort of, from what we had built, sort of destroying that and then rebuilding was quite fun. I think, you know, we we didn't do the opposite. We didn't get to do the opposite in season one. So that was like, that's how we started. And we had enough prep time to do that. So I think we, we sort of found the right spaces where that destruction would read more than other spaces. And therefore, yeah, I think we had enough time to explore and as I said, as I mentioned before, rebuild part of the palace for the destruction and, and be quite accurate about the reconstruction as we went along. So I think that was uh, challenging, absolutely, because we didn't build in the beginning with that in mind, um, but, but fun, we got to, to be creative with that. 
And uh, with the balance of power changing in season two, uh, you know, beginning with the coup and then uh, uh, Catherine in power, uh, how did the look of the series evolve as, as you know, we're changing the, that sort of balance in the characters and in the politics? Well, no, that's a really good question because, um, well, that was very much part of the conversations with Tony McNamara, the showrunner, right at the start is like when Catherine gets, when she um, sort of takes over and uh, after her coronation, does the palace change? And I feel like we do that in specific scenes. We do that in the stateroom, which is her office through um, set decoration. We, we so it's there's hints to that in specific scenes, but there's not a major change because she has no time for that. So that's that was part of like understanding the character. She's running a country and she's struggling with um, getting to terms on how to do that. And she's got Peter in house arrest, and you know, and everyone loved him, and he was the fun one. And so she's struggling with understanding how how do people look. So I feel like as much as we wanted to do that and. Potentially we're doing it more this season. Um, yeah, we didn't get around to, to doing it in a very obvious way. So I think it was like it here and then, like it, with specific scenes. So she does, she hosts a very boring philosophy breakfast um, dedicated to Diderot. And then in that room, it's like the, the architecture and the dressing changes completely. And um, it all goes very formal and and people react to that in a very bad way. So I think we sort of through design tell um, her sort of strive to bring order to this palace and introduce idea of enlightenment. And uh, yeah, I, I guess her, her strive to sort of create order somehow is shown through design. But then it's in specific scenes. And then the following scene, we've got a baby shower and everyone just, it, it all rebels against that. So it sort of go, fluctuates, I think. Uh, and you're specifically nominated uh, for the Emmy for the season finale episode, Wedding. Uh, what about the production design in that episode, uh, you know, stands out to you or are you, are you especially proud of? From that, from that episode. So, in that episode, well, we built a, a war-torn village from scratch. So I think that episode is most representative of an entire new build for that season. And that was built on location and it was supposed to be, well, it's it's supposed, so there's like the Velimentov who's the, he's the head of the military and he's got his headquarters in an abandoned church. And I'm really proud of the, the process for that because it was actually, we don't get to have a long prep on this in terms of like the blocks. And so it was a spare of the moment sort of decision, let's go for that. And then and the process of the design from the design to the build to shooting was quite short. So I think um, as a team, we really pulled it out off um, in terms of getting quite a lot of detail in that, in that um, village. And uh, so that includes the, our amazing set decorating team and set decorator who's nominated obviously for an Emmy with me and Monica Albert and, and creating that world outside of our palace, I think was an absolute challenge. So I'm really pleased with that. And I think episode 10 also then shows how we reused um, sets and built sets within, which is um, the wedding right at the end. Um, the nursery, I'm very, very proud of the nurse, the Paul's nursery, because it's a completely different room to any other that we've seen before in season one or two, and it's very colorful. Um, and it's a room that is supposedly designed by Peter for his child. So I think, um, yeah, that room is, there's so much detail that went into the design of that room. So yeah, I'm particularly proud of the nursery, which appears uh, in episode 10. Well, I, I wanna congratulate you on your work on uh, the show this season and on your Emmy nomination. And thank you so much for talking with me about it. Thank you so much, it was a pleasure. Thank you.